Hello! This video will explain about the various variable types and how to use them in your tests. To see the variables list in your test, open the variables view. If the view is not available, you can add it from the view tab in the ribbon. Just press on the variables button in the variable views section. Now let's add a new variable using the Add button. A new window comes up and allows us to set the properties of the new variable. So we can set the name, usually to have something meaningful to the usage, like IP address. Then we can select the type of the variable, and as you can see there are a few types of variable that you can use in your tests, so let's review them. A string variable can hold any kind of text that you need, and in various lengths. The other types you will use the most are the numeric type, that can hold numbers, and allows you to later run calculations using these variables, and the session type that holds the state of the connection as long as you need, for instance, for telnet sessions. Once you select the type, you can then set the dimension. The dimension could be either a scalar, and in this case, it will hold only one value, for instance, an IP address. It could be a vector, and it could then hold a list of values, or it could be a matrix, and it could then hold a table of values, for instance, input data from an Excel sheet. Publishing a variable is covered in a different tutorial, but in general, it allows you to expose the variable and its value out of the scope of this function. Then you can set a description that might help you later to better understand the usage of this variable. The initial value is what the variable gets every time we start running the test. Once we set the initial value and apply, we can see that another tab is now available. This is the current value. Currently it matches the initial value, but during the test execution, only the current value will be updated, while the initial value remains the same. You can see that this new variable was added to the user defined section. The module section shows you the list of variables that are created automatically for you, as outputs from some of the tools. An example of such output is when you use the instruction tool and ask the user for information. Then, for each value that you request from the user, an automatic variable is created, and they all grouped under the module name. Now let's open the instruction step and see how we can use the variables there. For the user inputs, we can now use the variable that we just created and set it as the default value for the user. And in order to control which variables are automatically created for a step, we can open the I.O. panel. And then we can check or uncheck the Create Variable checkbox for each value. You can decide, for example, that you want to assign one of the output values to one of your user-defined variables. And in this case, you can cancel the creation of the automatic variable. Let's see the behavior of the variables during runtime. The instruction window comes up, and you can see that the IP address field got the default value that we set for the variable. Let's change it now to a different value, and after pressing the OK button, the IP address variable current value is updated with the new value. That's all. 
you can now add variables to your tests and make them more dynamic.